Welcome to Techler Talks 8, everybody. Um, we are going to mainly talk about, at least start with the talking about the Linus Tech Tips channel hack on YouTube. Why don't we just start with that? So how did you hear about this? Yeah, uh, I saw it in, it was on Matrix, in the, the new oil chat room. <laughs> okay. So people were posting about it, screenshots of, of the channel. For people who are, I guess if you're on YouTube, I consider this living almost under a rock for YouTube standards. Who is Linus Tech Tips? Uh, Linus Tech Tips is a is a YouTube channel with like 15 million subscribers. I think they're at now, or almost, anyways. Um, and they're they're a network of channels, so a couple of their channels were were affected. Basically, what happened is this morning, uh, probably around like 6 or 7 a.m. Canadian time, where they are, I, their channel was replaced with like Tesla branding, and then a cryptocurrency video was uploaded to it. Um, so kind of a classic. YouTube scam um, that has been happening a couple times, but I'm not sure if that's happened to anyone as high profile as Linus Tech Tips before. Yeah, I think the closest similar attack that I've seen was some, I, I guess this is where it's debated because even when you look up top YouTubers, there's a whole debate of whether or not mus music channels count towards that. But sure. this did happen to several people um, who were artists on YouTube, big artists, like some of the top artists on YouTube via their Vivo, like YouTube Vivo. I think they have, Oh yeah. internally, I think artists have YouTube Vivo still or something like that. I, I don't know how that works, but essentially some artist channels were taken over and it was replaced with similar crypto Tesla crap. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's the only thing that's comparable to this. Is this guy a retard? This isn't the first time Linus Tech Tips has been hacked. The last time it happened, their account was taken over very similar to, um, this happened to a few different channels, a few big channels. Um, this is when they were quite a bit smaller, I think at least three or four years ago at this point. But they were uh, sim swapped. So their oh. YouTube channel was taken over via sim swap attack. I think that one, they just uploaded some content, if I'm not mistaken. I think they actually took over their Twitter. I don't know if it was a YouTube takeover, but I know for a fact their Twitter was hacked because of a sim swap attack. Yeah, uh, sounds sounds plausible. I uh, I know that they've. Linus has also doxed his own personal information, I think, more than a couple times. I think once he posted a picture of his credit card information <laughs> on Twitter or something like that. Right. And honestly, like, if you're... It's tough when you're someone who's that large, because I have read online that people who are neighbors to Linus kind of mm -hmm. casually tout that they're neighbors to Linus online. <laughs> And so no matter how careful Linus is, if he's living around other people and they're not doing a great job and they say online that they're neighbors of his, it's still a very tough situation to navigate. Okay, let's go through the basic facts of the hack then. So you gave the time, you gave, it seems like a majority of their main channels were impacted. Now, I know their main comments. channel was affected. Um, Tech Quickie was affected. Short Circuit was not. That's their biggest one that wasn't. I did see there was a PSA that they said that they were in communication with Google about how the attack happened. And as of right now, the account is locked down. I did see that they've been posting jokes about it on Twitter, so it doesn't seem like they're... Linus is super outwardly concerned, I think. Uh, it's a pretty safe bet that they're getting the channels back, I would say. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah, I, I wish they weren't joking about it. Yeah, I, I wish they weren't joking about it. But 
that's that's it <laughs> oh they just posted one i see <laughs> so they're they're still published it's it's business as usual over there <laughs> Um, but yeah, so as of right now, so let, let's kind of dive. Okay, so that's that's the that's what's established. Many mm -hmm. of their top channels aren't even on YouTube anymore. You can't even find them. They're just gone. Ta -da! It's it's gone. Supposedly they're in contact with Google to try to resolve this, and supposedly they're going to do more work to harden their accounts. Now, as a creator. I don't understand how this happened in the first place for a channel that's as large as Linus's. And I know that size is not equivalent to the security precautions that are put in place, generally, not always, but there seems to be a clear mismatch here. So we were talking on Signal earlier and I, there have been WAN shows where Linus kind of talks about the channel management and he's like, oh yeah, so someone did, did this to one of our videos. We didn't know who it was. So we asked our team who logged in and did that. The way he worded it made it sound like, Many people, if not a lot of people within their team, have access to their channel on YouTube, mm -hmm. which doesn't make much sense to me. And then you also commented about how they se it seems like almost all of their team members have access to their Twitter account. Yeah, I think um, I think on a Wan Show episode, he said that they have a policy where any team member can just post whatever they want to Twitter. That's basically their their Twitter strategy. <laughs> Right. And, you know, I think that's a fun strategy. I get why they do that. It's cool because it's it's an easy way to just keep engagement on Twitter rolling. I love it. Liar! Liar! But from a security perspective, back here, we're like principle of least privilege. If someone doesn't need access to Twitter, they shouldn't have access to Twitter. Um, I even, e even we have a community ma manager because you don't manage our day to day stuff. It's Susie. Even with Susie, I have never given Susie creds for the Techlore Twitter or the Techlore YouTube account. Yeah. It's it seems hard on their end. I mean, on my end I get like one new device and for me I, I'll admit, I probably think this, I think about this a lot more than the average creator does, but I get like one new service, just a new account, and I'm like, oh shit, how does this, how, how can I implement this safely into our current workflow? Um, what do you self-host versus what FOSS do you use? First, what do you pay for? That's a big question. I will say I actually answered this kind of on a surveillance report. I think it was SR 117 or 118. Um, very recent, last few weeks. Um, someone asked like what we self-host, Nate, Nate and I on surveillance report, and I don't really self-host anything. I really don't like self-hosting things because I don't want to be responsible for my data, you know? And that's the whole selling point of self-hosting something, which I fully understand. But like uptime for me is super important. You know, like I can't stand when something is down for even 10 minutes and I hate troubleshooting things. I hate maintaining my own stuff. Um, I like things to just work. I used to be more like in control of everything and I feel like I've hit a good balance now with my life where I trust the services that I'm giving control to and I trust them to handle my data, my privacy and security extremely well, but they can also guarantee uptime. They can guarantee that like everything is just going to work almost 24 seven. And I also have a very, very minimal um, digital lifestyle. I don't do much with tech. And if it wasn't for tech lore, I probably wouldn't even have a computer, which is what I said earlier. So like, I, I, I just don't do much with my tech. Like photos are the only thing that like, I really need to worry about storing and doing something with them. That's really it. So we always encourage minimalism, meaning you don't open these accounts in the first place, but when you do open it with the concept of minimalism from the concept of having to share your personal information, which is minimize the amount of personal real information you're giving companies because you don't know what's going to happen. It could be Chick-fil-A, could be Habit, could be Burger King, could be McDonald's, could be literally all the millions of other merchants out there. You just don't know.
Mm -hmm. I don't think most people do that. I think, especially yeah. like you look at Linus, look at the amount of things they review. Linus is like, oh, I'm switching phones. I'm gonna try this phone out for a week. That's like the, all their employees. Their employees are like, oh, I've been trying this phone out for the last week. Here's what's going on. So they're just constantly cycling devices. And like in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, how can they keep up with all these changes? And it's there's so many moving parts. And I, I don't know how they keep up with that from a security perspective. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it seems like... Uh, they're, they're definitely taking a, a smaller channel approach to to their IT. <laughs> and I think like at a certain point you have to realize that you're like a, a multi-million dollar company at this point, right? Like you should probably have people that are in charge of security. Yeah, at this point, you'd think it'd be like a valid investment for them. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and Linus always talks about he doesn't want to. Back when they were talking about Adobe and switching off of Adobe, they were like, well, if we switch from Adobe, we're going to see this amount of productivity decrease, which means money. And the Adobe suite for us pays for itself. So he has a very business outlook on a lot of this stuff. And so for me, I'm like, well, if they can upload to their YouTube channel, and they're not getting views for even 24 hours, how much money do you think they lose in 24 hours? Right. Do you think that pays for one person on their... That, I, I'm genuinely asking this. It, <laughs> does 24 hours of downtime for LTT pay like an InfoSec individual salary for a year? Genuine question. I, I don't know if, if it would, but I don't know if, if they make that much money, but they definitely make a lot of money to the point where I'd be like... I don't, I'm surprised they don't have like an actual security. And maybe they do, they don't want to share it. But like, if they had an actual security expert in there, based on what we've seen so far from this attack, it doesn't seem like it was a super sophisticated attack. But maybe it is. We don't know yet. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. Did I tell you about when I met Linus? But I can't believe that uh, their channel isn't restored. Um, I figured it'd be like a matter of hours when I saw it way earlier this morning, but uh, they seem to be taking their time. Yeah, I totally agree. And actually, that reminds me, sorry, there, there is more I want to talk about here. I doubt they're enrolled in the Google Advanced Protection Program. I doubt they're using YubiKeys for their account. Yeah, almost definitely not. It's, it's weird because Google doesn't seem to really advertise that. Um, I was seeing some comments, I was looking through the Twitter thread um, about this hack and I saw some other creators who were hacked previously saying that they were enrolled in that now and that like Google told them about it after the hack but they were like, why didn't you tell me about this before? <laughs> like, they're, they're not really advertising that program to the right people. I think that like a, a huge YouTube creator, um, if your entire business is on YouTube, like that is definitely within the the target audience for that tool or it should be i don't know if google considers them really to be the target audience for that or not i totally agree and it's bizarre because as a creator like in our creator studio panel it's not uncommon it's not common but it's not uncommon either for them to occasionally have like tips to keep your channel secure or make sure you're doing this so it's actually a common they have the infrastructure set up to alert creators of like what to do um, I know they have time to put those crappy little four minute videos that they publish every couple days that they send to us creators that are like how to have good thumbnails and they use terrible thumbnails on these <laughs> videos themselves. On that, we agree. Um, but yeah, the, I, I think my guess here is this is a Google problem of like projects doing their own thing. YouTube probably has like YouTube specific advice to keep your account secure. And mm -hmm. Google Advanced Protection Program is a Google thing. Even though it's a Google account to log into YouTube, my guess is, I, I don't know. That's just a, a random guess and almost an uneducated guess because I don't know how Google works internally. But 
it, it, it is, you're right, it's bizarre. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't advertise the advanced protection program, especially to larger creators that have such a mm -hmm. large audience. And it's not that extreme to set up, given, you know, this is people's livelihood if they're that large, most likely. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is if you have... like a stock Android device and you're enrolled in the Google Advanced Protection Program and you have to get some weird third party extension or you have to get something from like a third party app store for some weird ass integration, then you might have a problem. But that is extremely niche because you can't, you can't install third party app stores if you're enrolled in the Google Advanced Protection Program on a stock Android device, unless you install the app store before enrolling in it. So if you want to use F-Droid, you have to install F-Droid, enroll in Advanced Protection Program, and then you can download apps from F-Droid. But you can't enroll in Advanced Protection Program and then download F-Droid. It won't let you install a different app store. That's I didn't know that. That's interesting that you can work around it like that. Yeah, but I guess that it makes the, sense. Yeah, it's kind of like Apple's lockdown mode um, with uh, extensions. You can install the extensions or the system profiles or whatever yeah. beforehand. And then when you enable lockdown, you can't install anymore. So similar thing, except it's easier to disable lockdown than it is to disable advanced protection program because you have to do advanced prote protection program online. Right. And then for when I did that, because I wanted to test the process between going in and out of advanced protection program, the Android device didn't like recognize that I disabled advanced protection program for like a hot minute. Like I, I didn't know how to trigger it because it still wouldn't let me install it. I think I did a reboot and it still wasn't letting me. And then I just tried later that day and eventually it worked. So I didn't do that much testing to actually narrow down when it happened. And I would love to look at more VPN providers, but if you think I'm gonna rely on any documentation for any other VPN company, or if you think I'm gonna actually manually test every VPN company on every operating system again, you're out of your freaking mind. For people who are new here, we should have explained this earlier. Google has a program called the Advanced Protection Program. Anyone watching this video can enroll in it. It's open to the public. If you have a Google account, you can enable this on your Google account. Essentially, Google will lock down some features in your Google experience to make it a little bit more private and secure especially to third parties, not so much from Google itself. And it will require you to set up 2FA via YubiKeys or any other hardware key. Um, and hardware keys at this point are definitely the recommended way to go for your 2FA options. So it's weird that a big channel like Linus probably wasn't using the advanced protection program. It's also funny, so I, I am going to call people out here. When I made that stock Android video, And he doesn't like it. You know where I'm going with this. When I made that stock <laughs> Android video, I talked about one of the core reasons I moved to stock Android was because of this program. Because I am a creator with a public presence that has a big target on my back. And I want all the security that I can get out of these accounts that I'm required to use, which if I'm uploading to YouTube is a Google account. It's a very unique situation. Not many people are stuck in that situation. People were going in the comments going, custom ROMs are still more secure. And I'm like, well, if I can't enroll in a Google Advanced Protection Program, it leaves me open to more of these attacks. And if you're looking at a channel like Linus Tech Tips, and this has happened to other channels in the past as well, it seems like Google Advanced Protection Program is one of the best things you can do as a YouTube creator to protect your YouTube account. Um, a, because there are protections in place, but B, especially, it does require the hardware keys. If you just set up the hardware keys on a standard Google account, you're still probably gonna get most of that protection anyway. But also, back when I made that video, I don't think that most custom ROMs actually supported hardware keys. So, 
again, my point still stands. There are times and there are environments and there are situations where it makes sense that you have to use something like a stock Android device if it means that you get the protections of something like a stock. What company or organization do you think poses the greatest threat to the average person's privacy? I honestly like this. This is very subjective, for sure. And um, I, I, I really, I, I'm gonna. This is be. This is going to be kind of a hot take in the privacy community. I don't think that every big tech company is sitting. They're not sitting in their office going what's the best way to collect everybody's data? Mwahaha. Like, I don't think that's their core goal. I think their core goal is maximizing profits, which just happens to be, well, let's just collect all this data and find something to do with it. Um, and then, so because of that, because I think they all come from the same angle, with the exception of Apple, because Apple, Apple makes money from hardware. Apple theoretically could drop all software and run like Linux on their computers and Android on their phones. In theory, this is like ridiculous world I'm talking about here. But they could very much do that because they sell hardware and they make money on their hardware. Um, Google doesn't really do that as much. Google really does rely on um, their advertising business a lot for their money. Facebook as well. Facebook has zero business model that isn't just invading people's information. I, I would really say when it comes down to it, Facebook is the company that I think is Facebook meta, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, personally, I think that they are the one that pose the biggest threats from a corporate perspective, mainly because they, they, are, they stoop so low. Like they, they will do the lowest things and there's so many people on it too, 2 billion people, active users on Facebook. And they also own Instagram and WhatsApp and they correlate all that traffic. And there's so little regulation and it's very obvious that like they actually do have real influence on people. Cambridge Analytica and many other scandals have proven like the real influence that Facebook has on the world. And frankly, like when I really try to like dig into Google, a lot of what Google does like yeah it's it's like really screwy and like they're really crappy to their customers when it comes from like a control perspective and from a privacy perspective but there's actually very few scandals that really show like real world impacts of what google is doing to the world and same goes with apple like these aren't perfectly private companies but when it comes down to real world impacts that these companies have had on people that we can actually measure and quantify it really is facebook that comes on top of a lot of this so i really do think that facebook is one of the most evil companies in the world from a privacy angle um so i don't know that's personal preference super subjective i would just say that like at least google has other revenue models that aren't just their advertising business and same goes with apple and then i don't know what facebook does like what does facebook do um i guess they have like oculus now and they have these weird other projects but like no one like, their main thing is their software and their software has no revenue model whatsapp instagram facebook like all these things have to inherently rely on just completely being toxic to people in the world but i'm very pessimistic i don't like facebook just want to call out some of those people who are like, this is a stupid take. And I'm like, <laughs> is it? No, I think, I think for you, it absolutely makes sense. And stuff like this kind of proves that this is actually necessary for YouTube creators. Yeah, or anyone with a public, anyone with a target on their back, <coughs> that there's mm -hmm. going to be millions of people watching their content, where it puts them at a greater risk. At that point, like security is so hard to maintain at that level. And even like people who watch our content kind of seem to understand how we talk about security, privacy, anonymity. Like you kind of need security first. Again, it's oversimplification. You're going to find tons of mishmash here, but it's always good to have security done first. Then you can kind of work on privacy. Then we can kind of, if you want to, work on the anonymity front. Is this guy a retard?
And the more publicity you get, the larger the target becomes, the harder it is to secure yourself. To the point where if you're a huge presence, if you're the president of the US, you need a whole US agency to keep you secure. You know, you need the Secret Service, you have literally all these agencies designed to just keep the president secure and safe. <laughs> You serious? They're, they're not even worried about privacy at that point, really. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do as a president for your privacy? There's like so little you can do. So take away, don't become famous. Yeah, that is the real takeaway. <laughs> Don't become famous. <laughs>